Hello, everyone, and welcome to this quick presentation of getting started with Elastic Observability. I'm Luca, and in the next few minutes, I'll be showing you how you can use a simple Python service and instrument this service using Elastic APM. We're going to get more and more advanced as we go, and we're going to compare what changed between versions and how that reflects in Kibana. Towards the end, we're also going to add proper logging and collecting those logs using a file read. All of the code that I'll be using here is available in GitHub, so feel free to check this out after this presentation. With that being said, let's dive right in. This is a very hands-on presentation. We're going to look at some code, make some modifications, and then see how that behaves in Kibana. Starting off with this very simple Python service in version number one. As you can tell here, we have a very simple Python Flask service that has a single endpoint. And when connecting to this endpoint, the service calls Redis 20 times and then has 10% of the requests being slowed down deliberately and another 10% of the requests fail with a runtime error. I have all of the versions of this service deployed right now, so it's quicker for me to show you what's going on. And I also have a very sophisticated load generator running to generate some load onto each of these services. If we take a look at the base version of this service at service number one log, we can see that it's getting requests and doing something. Next up, we want to add instrumentation to this service. I already did all of that work. And what we can do now is we can just compare the two files, left hand being left hand side not being instrumented and right hand side already fully instrumented. And then we can see what changes were required to get here. So to make the Elastic APM instrumentation work for Flask, all we had to do is import this one package here and then initialize Elastic APM with the details of the APM server. I'm using Elastic Cloud here, but this would obviously also work if you are using your own standalone APM server running within your organization. And that's it. So we're just using the out-of-the-box instrumentation here. But now we can start to look at Kibana and see how this service looks in Kibana now. So looking at service number two, we see that we are getting about 60 requests a minute here. And we can see the get requests being made to endpoint number one. If we click on this and then scroll down, we can see three distinct bumps in the latency distribution charts. And our goal now is to figure out what's going on with each of these bumps. If we scroll down further, we see the individual spans being automatically generated for Redis, as well as that overall Flask uh, get request span up here. We could also look at some of these slower transactions. They look remarkably similar, um, although there's a lot of nothing happening towards the end of the span. So if you wanted to figure out what's going on here and also what's happening down here, we need a little bit more instrumentation. So let's compare the basic instrumentation with a little bit of an advanced instrumentation over here. If we compare these two files, we can once again see the changes that have been made in between. First up, we're enabling span compression to compress spans that happen very often in a quick succession into a single compressed span. In addition, we're also adding a few custom spans down here, and we're also going to label some of those transactions with things that happen while the request is running. Towards the end, we're also capturing the exception, and we're going to mark the transaction outcome as a failure if this runtime error happened. Going back into Kibana again, this time looking at service number three and seeing what's different now. So this looks pretty similar at first. The one thing that changed now is that we're probably now tracking the failed transactions rate as well. So looking at this one transaction here, we can see we now have failing transactions. And if we click at the errors tab up here, we also see that we have this runtime error tracked in APM now. If we continue to scroll down in the overview page uh, for this get endpoint transaction, we now still see these three distinct latency bumps, but the APM UI now is telling us already that all of the slow transactions to the right-hand side here are being caused by these failures that we get. So that's interesting information. Another difference now is this compressed span feature that's working. So instead of having 20 individual spans present here, we just have them collapse into a single one right now. Much easier to look at, especially if you have 
20 or maybe even thousands of requests being made to Redis. If we want to know what's special about these slow requests now and what causes them to be slow, we can also use another cool advanced feature called latency correlations simply by clicking on this tab. And then APM is trying to figure out what's special about those slower transactions. And it's correctly able to tell us that indeed, like we said before, the slowest ones are called are caused by being uh, failed transactions. So we're just going to filter out these failed transactions. And then we're going to look at the latency correlations once more. So looking at the latency correlations again, now it's telling us that this grouping of slower transactions correlates with having the label slowed down deliberately. So using these labels in your APM instrumentation can improve the functionality of this latency correlation feature and make it very simple for you to figure out what's going on in your application. Now, the last step that we want to get working real quick is to also see our log messages being displayed here. For this to work, we are going to enable ECS logging in our Python service, logging in the Elastic Common Schema. So let's compare these two files here to figure out what we changed. All we needed to do is import the ECS logging package and the struct log package and adding uh, the configuration for each of them. I also added one additional log message here that teaches you how to add custom formatted logging to this. If we head over to the terminal again real quick and compare the logs for service number three with service number four, we can clearly tell that before we had very simple logging that wasn't really useful. And now we have full-fetched JSON logging with a timestamp and also with those span and transaction IDs that APM needs to make that correlation. In Kibana, if we now look at service number four, look at one of our transactions that we made and look at the logs tab here, we are now able to connect log messages to distinct transactions. So every single request that gets made now has a distinct set of log messages associated with it. And we can view those in a single screen within APM. And that's it. So as you can see with just a few changes, we managed to instrument our Python service. And we also managed to add proper logging to the service, shipping the files off to Elasticsearch. And that's it. Thank you.